Welcome to Transformation Tuesday with Apostle Clarence Langston and Pastor Robin Langston. During this transformative experience, expect to be reshaped, renewed, revamped, and reconstructed by hearing a message that's going to change your situation no matter what you're experiencing. We want you to know that God's Word is a recipe for transformation. Your transformation doesn't have to happen alone. Apostle and Pastor Langston, along with a community of faith-filled people, will be commenting, declaring, and believing for their change along with you. You will hear numerous declarations. We invite you to type them inside of our comments section and say them out loud. The Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing. A declaration or decree is simply us speaking out loud and affirming the words God gives us because as we continuously hear them, our faith is being built and our words are taking shape. We invite you to like and share this live experience on your social media timelines. Sharing is caring. Give others the opportunity to experience the transformation they need. Welcome to our Transformation Tuesday experience. Are you ready? Oh, 
evening, everyone. I am Apostle Clarence Langston. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our Transformation Tuesday. So good to see all of you guys uh, connecting. Make sure that you're sharing tonight. Man, Pastor Robin sends her love. We love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in to Transformation Tuesday. Uh, the name of our ministry is Word in Action Christian Center, and we're located here in the great city of Detroit. And I just thank God uh, for all of our spiritual children, all of the discipleship, the members, the leadership of Word in Action Christian Center, and all the breakthrough believers. Come on in. Good evening, everyone. Man, I want you guys to have a spirit of expectation. I'm so, so excited about tonight's Transformation Tuesday. And I want you to know that your mind is about to be transformed. You're about to take on the mind of Christ. Uh, when you know uh, what God's will is for you, you can't help but prosper. I want somebody to type in tonight, I thank God for the will of God in my life. I thank God for the will of God in my life because when the will of God is manifest in my life, his promises are going to manifest. Simply means everything that God has said and promised me in his word, it is coming to pass in my life as I honor his word. And this is so important for us to know, you know, I'm going to share in a moment a verse of scripture in St. John uh, 1 and 1, because I want us to remember the power of trusting God. There is power in trusting God. And so when we honor God, God blesses us. The Bible says he's a present help in our time of need. That means God is always here. God is always around us, but we have to acknowledge him. And when we acknowledge him, he will direct our paths. And I want you to know that part of acknowledging God is remembering and memorializing what God told us to remember. And God told us to remember these seven feast days. And we know Good Friday, we remember the day that Jesus Christ uh, was willing to become a sacrifice for us as believers. Jesus was willing to be crucified. He who knew no sin was willing to take the sins of this world upon his life so that for us that believe in the name of Jesus and the authority of Jesus and know that he is the son of God and he was willing to die for us, positions us to become an inheritor. That means we inherit we inherit all that God has for us. There's an inheritance um, that comes to us as the children of God. You know, the Bible lets us know that we are a part of a royal priesthood. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it says that we are a chosen people. We are a chosen generation, and there is an inheritance that God has for us. But God wants us to honor his calendar. We're going to talk about it uh, tonight. Again, there are seven feasts. We're now in the spring uh, time. And in the spring, there are four feasts that God wants us to remember. See, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Please make sure that you're sharing with people that you know, because so many people attend church or go to church, but they don't really honor God's calendar because they don't know his calendar. They're not even aware. Uh, they're shouting and they're praising and jumping on Sunday, and nothing's wrong with that. That's, a mo that's an emotional uh, um, manifestation of celebration because of what you hear. And we, 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 our faith is built by what we hear. The Romans 10, uh, chapter 13 through 15, uh, talks about how can they hear without a preacher? How can he preach unless he's been sent? So when we hear the good news of the gospel, my God, that is a reason to shout and praise, uh, but there's more to it than this. God wants us to be old, more than overcomers. And so he tells us that we overcome by the blood of the lamb. That's what Jesus sacrificed on Good Friday, the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. Well, guys, there is some testimony um, that God has in this word that he's done for his uh, people, the chosen people, the children of Israel, since the beginning of uh, time, since time has existed, God has blessed um, his children, and we are his children. We've been engrafted into the body of Christ through the lordship of Jesus Christ, and so God wants us to remember what he's done for us as a people. He wants us to remember how he brought us through and brought us out. So that way, no matter what you go through, no matter what comes your way, you know that God's going to bring you out again. If he did it before, he's going to do it again. Come on, type that in. If God did it before, 
he's going to do it again. So God wants us to think this way. He wants us to have this mindset that we are victorious in Christ and that we are victory. That means because we believe in the name of Jesus, we believe in the deity of Jesus Christ, being the son of God, knowing that he knew no sin, he took away our sin. Come on, that's a reason to be excited. And so it's important that we honor God's calendar. So I'm so glad that you're tuning in tonight. I want you to share again, uh, share with as many people as you know, simply hit the share button in the lower left-hand corner, little blue box that says share, and it'll share with people that's on your timeline, on your social media. Why? Because people are hurting. People are confused. People are discombobulated. They're unsure about themselves. They're unsure about their life. They're unsure about the, 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 their purpose or their sexuality, or people are dealing with a lot of confusion. And we know God is not the author of confusion, but the devil, he's the author of confusion. He loves to confuse people, to get people to want to end their lives. And that's why suicide is on an on-time high, because the enemy is driving people to give up on life because they feel misunderstood, because they're, they may be confused about something that's going on in their life or in their mindset. Well, I want someone to hear me today that the love of God covers the multitude of faults. So no matter what bad decisions you made, no matter uh, what, what you're doing or what you have done, to, you're going to hear a message today that when you honor God and you honor his calendar, you cannot help but prosper. It's not by your works. It's by your faith. Somebody type that in. As we prepare to pray, continue to share. And remember again, God said, remember uh, these feast days. In spring, there's four feast days. Uh, we've just celebrated uh, several of them. And the first one is Passover. And we're going to talk about that because this year Passover fell on Good Friday. It started on Friday and it will last until Saturday. And so we're going to talk about the Passover. We're going to talk about unleavened bread, how God told the children of Israel to remove the yeast from the bread so the bread would not rise and it would represent a, um, a no sin. And so he said, remember, remember the feast of Passover. Remember the feast of unleavened bread. Um, remember the feast of first fruit. What is the first fruit? Jesus was the first to resurrect out of the grave. So he is the first fruit. So he said, remember this feast. Then he said, remember the feast of Pentecost. 50 days after Jesus rose from the dead, showed himself to his disciples, ministered to them before he rose. 50 days later, he promised them, he told them to be in the upper room, to be together, to be on one accord, because he was sending back a helper and his name was Holy Spirit. And that happened 50 days later, which was Penta, Pentecost. And they began to celebrate and they were filled with the spirit of God and they received the power of the heavenly father. So he says, those are the four spring feasts. Now the three fall feasts is Rosh Hashanah, going back to the beginning of time, the book of Genesis, the creation of man, and Yom Kippur, the day of atonement. That was the purpose of the blood. If you remember all the uh, those that were in the family of God, that when the children of Israel would bring an animal to be sacrificed, they would bring it to the priest because you needed blood for atonement. Well, we don't have to do that any longer. So we remember the, sh the foreshadow of what they had to do, but now we have the blood of Jesus. Come on, somebody praise God for the blood of Jesus. I'm getting excited because I'm telling you guys, this word tonight is going to change your whole trajectory and it's going to put you in the, in the path that God has for you as we honor his calendar. Then the third all feast is Sukkot. It means that we're going to tabernacle with Christ when he comes back to the earth, but it also recognizes how that when we were in the wilderness and uh, the children of Israel would set up camp and how G the spirit of God would come and tabernacle with them in the tent. So, man, we got a special guest tonight. I'm telling you, prophetess Twyla Brown, she is going to bless our socks off. I just sense it. She's going to talk about God's calendar. I want you to have ears to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. I want you to have a heart to receive it. Listen, word and action and breakthrough believers. I believe that God is doing something great in the earth in this season. Even though it's getting worse in the world, it's getting greater in the kingdom. Come on, somebody needs to type that in. Though it's getting worse in the world, it's getting greater in the kingdom. God is empowering us with his knowledge and his wisdom and his understanding. But more than that, 
God said he'll give us a peace that surpasses all understanding. God will settle some things in our lives. I believe God's going to settle some things. Well, I'm going to open up with prayer, guys. The next voice that you're going to hear is going to be prophetess Twyla Brown. She's going to decree and declare the word of the Lord to us. And I just thank God again for my apostle, Apostle Wayne T. Jackson and Dr. Beverly, for their love for me and my wife and our family and our church family. We're an action Christian center. They pray for us. They cover us and they connect us to good, righteous, wholesome leadership, men and women of God that will decree and declare the word of the Lord that will build us to be stronger in the things of God so that we'll be able to move forward and be more than conquer. Somebody needs to type in, I thank God that I'm more than a conqueror. Come on, somebody type that in. I'm getting ready to pray. I thank God that I'm more than a conqueror. As you're typing it in, speak it out of your mouth. Speak it in your home. Speak it in your car. Speak it in your place of business and begin to acknowledge God in all your ways. I'm telling you, he's a present help in your time of need. Also, share. Let other people know. Let's connect in this moment. This woman of God is going to be a blessing to us. I'm going to open up with prayer. And after we pray, my God, the next voice you will hear will be that of prophetess Twyla Brown, decreeing and declaring the word of the Lord prophetically and apostolically in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for another blessed day. We thank you for Transformation Tuesday, where we decree and declare according to your word, Father God, all the blessings and the promises that you have for us that have come to us through your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord God, for the feast, Lord God, of Passover, for the feast of unleavened bread. Father, we thank you for the feast of first fruit and the feast of Pentecost. We honor you in according to your calendar because we know that when we follow you, according to your word, Psalm 37, 23, the steps of the righteous will be ordered of you. So, Father, we thank you that our steps are ordered of you. Thank you, Lord God, that we're being led by your spirit. We've been empowered by your son, Jesus. And we thank you that our name is victory. We decree and declare that we have ears to hear what the spirit of the Lord is going to say to us tonight. And thank you that we'll never be the same, but we're being empowered to do the work of ministry. Father God, we praise your name. We thank you, Lord God, for prophetess Twyla Brown. We thank you, Lord God, for giving her liberality to decree and declare your word tonight. Father, we receive her. In Jesus' name, we put a demand on her anointing. Amen and amen. Make sure you celebrate the woman of God as she comes to deliver the word. Be blessed. I'll be right back. Bless you, Apostle. Listen, I am so excited to be back with my family and teaching on the times and seasons. You know, God has a plan for everything. And as I um, told you in April, which was the month of Nishan Abib in God's calendar, he pregnates us in Nishan Abib. And literally for the next few months, he is literally looking for that baby to be delivered. And it looks just like him. I was so excited when the uh, man of God called me. I said, listen, man of God, I said, I'm pregnant with the word. And the word of the season is the time and seasons we are in, which is the month of Savan, the month of Savan in God's calendar. God's calendar is 5,782 years old. So this is not new uh, with God. i tell you a little bit about it. You know what, God, there were 12 um, months in his calendar. There is and 12 tribes that's associated with each individual month. What I do is I help people understand the times and the seasons of God based on his calendar. Um, Apostle, you said something uh, in the uh, introduction about um, real and fake people. This month, we're going to be talking about the tribe of Zebulon. Zebulon was the tribe of the business people. And literally, they were just straightforward. Listen, with them, you could be real or you could be fake, but you couldn't be real fake. They would tell you if you was a real, things in your life should be flowing correctly. God's provision should be flowing correctly because you are following who you are supposed to be following. If your stuff is blocked up and stopped up, they were the ones, listen, that had 20% of their responsibility when the tribes came to their months, because every tribe was associated for taking care of kingdom business that month. If you didn't meet the cut, you knew that you would see a representative for Zebulon. 
And they would pray and seek the Lord and see where the sin was. I tell you, if we had a body of Christ now that really and truly allowed the um, Zebulons to come forth and do what God has told them to do, I tell you, there would be no lack among us in the body of Christ and those that are around us. So I love starting out with that. And I always tell people, I love you real or fake, but you can't be real fake, right? So, Father God, I just thank you for this time. I just thank you, Lord God, that I pray every time, God, if I'm too high, bring me down. If I'm too low, bring me up. I want to be like Ezekiel saw, the wheel in the middle of the wheel, going in and out of time. Lord God, don't let me go too fast. I don't want to be early. Lord God, don't let me be too late. In Jesus' matchless name I pray. Amen and amen. Well, guys. I am Master Teacher Twala Brown, and I'm going to, we're going to be studying on tonight about the month of Savan. Savan is spelled S-I-V-A-N, and it is the third month in God's calendar. In God's calendar, he always associates a tribe with each month. And this month, the tribe of Zebulon is associated with this month. I want to tell you that the month of Savan has about 30 days in it. And so we really started like on the 31st because in God's calendar, he literally put two first days in the beginning of his calendar. So we would call that Rosh Kadush, means head of the month. And we have two days where we recognize that it is Rosh Kadush and it is the first of the month. What makes this particular month so precious to God is another one of his lasting ordinal feast is during this time. I get excited about this particular month because some of the things that I know about this particular month is, is that we know that we just celebrated um, Pentecost. It ended at dusk on yesterday. It started on um, Saturday and it ended on dusk on yesterday. And most of us around the world were celebrating Pentecost and uh, going into that. And we were wearing white. And a lot of people asked me, why do we wear white? And what is Pentecost all about? And what is this word that I'm hearing that's thrown around now called Shabbat? Well, you know what? It's all in um, the same family. Depends on who you're talking to. And Shabbat really is um, our Pentecost. Listen, the word Pentecost comes from the Greek and it comes from Pentecostal. And so what it means is 50. And so a lot of people say, well, why do um, we celebrate Pentecost? And you probably heard the story of Pentecost. And if you haven't, listen, go and do a good read with Exodus 19. Because on that particular day, on Saturday and Sunday, we stayed up all night reading about Pentecost and how it came to pass. I explained to some people that, you know, most people thought, Dr. Beverly, that the year of the double-double, why your church is saying it's the year of the double-double, which is correct, and most of us are saying the year of the double-double. Some people are saying it's the year of the double-double because we are in 2022. Well, I want to share with you the reason why we say um, that this is a double-double year. God will have multiple double-doubles during this particular year. And on Saturday, we faced one of those double-doubles. And so, listen, when you're actually operating in God's calendar, and in this time, he deals with numbers, you can break the six down and break it down into three twos to get the six. And then you have 2022. And he would have this to happen on Pentecost Day. He said, Twala, the acceleration that of Nehemiah, the reason why billions of people were shouting and people were having parties all in white all weekend long, whether they knew it or not, because God opened up a portal of the business person, which is associated with the tribe of Zebulon. Why were they actually wearing white? Because in God's people, the, the priests, they had breastplates. And on that breastplate, they had 12 stones. And in order, they had um, 
three individual rows and it went four deep. And so you symbolize each one of the tribes. Well, if you look at Zebulon's stone on that breastplate, you would see that it would be white, quartz, diamond, or clear. So listen, one of the reasons why we literally wear white is, is that we are symbolizing that this is the month of Savant and the tribe that's associated with it is Zebulon. This is the business person's month. Now, most people say, but what does that actually mean? If you look at the prophecy in Genesis 49, you will actually see a prophecy from Jacob to his son, Zebulon. And he told him that he was going to make his money by um, the sea. And that, listen, if you make your money by the sea, you're going to have to deal with ships. Why is Zebulon so important the whole year long? The reason why the Zebulon, the business person, is so important this whole year is because look at the end of that two. In our year, two, two, 2022, in God's year, five, seven, eight, two. You see that particular two. And the two means dwell, household, partnership, sponsorship, fellowship, relationship. Do y'all see the ships? So when people tell you that this is the year to merger, this is the year to merger the church, the priest, the prophet, to merger with the business person. Because all this particular year, God is giving you what he gave Zebulon, the ability to make your money through the ships. It's time for partnership. Zebulon is known for his partnership with his brother, one of his full brothers, which is Issachar. Why are we bringing up Issachar? Because Issachar was a prophet, a priest, and literally had the responsibility of understanding the times and the seasons. And with this being Zebulon's month, what would happen is, is that Zebulon during this month of responsibility would definitely go and see his brother. This particular month, you guys, have some characteristics to it. Whenever Zebulon came, and it was the month of Savan, it meant God wants to do business with us. And we want to do business with God. He was a business person. And so he would go to his brother Issachar with his anointing and literally and give. This is a giving month. I'm just not saying that. This is 5,782 years old because the business person, Zebulon, found out a key, a secret, if you will, to the secret chambers of treasure, apostle, which was given. He knew that God operated in the Trinity and was tridimensional. He understood that his particular month that he was responsible for held one of the most wealthiest feasts. Now, each particular feast is around a harvest time. Come on, somebody. See, I'm already excited. Passover is around the feast of the barley. All right? It, it's a harvest season. Barley. God said, listen, you go in. This is associated with Passover. And so you'll remember Passover because you'll know the barley will start coming forth. You're going to reap that particular harvest. Again, I will not leave you empty handed once you celebrate these feasts because I'm going to set them around harvest time. Now, this particular season that we are in, now this is called um, the Feast of Weeks. We celebrate Pentecost and Shabbat, and I told you why, because it was 50 days from the time of Passover to the time of Mount Sinai when Moses came down. And so that's where we get the 50 from, but it's the time that it happened, during the time of the tribe of Zebulon, which is the wheat harvest, which was the greatest harvest out of the feast. What is God saying in this particular time? He says, listen, there's some characteristics to this particular month. I'm going to associate an alphabet 
with this particular month and every month. And I want to give you that alphabet, guys. The alphabet that's associated with the month of Savan and Zebulon is Zion. Now, it almost sounds like Zion, but it's Zion. And it's Z-A-Y-I-N. Now, listen, Apostle, the number, because uh, Zion is the seventh number letter in that Jewish alphabet, the number seven is recognized in this month. Think it not strange that God would show his tri-dimensional self and put a seven in there. Why? Because every time we see the number seven, it means completion. See, it's some things that some business people got to do in this month that if they don't do it, they'll be wiped out. Glory to God. One of the things that they have to do is, is ask God for mercy to complete their assignment, to complete the mission that he has given them. This was for before Mission Impossible ever came about, Apostle. This was on Mount Sinai, Moses coming down, and the tribe of Zebulon associated characteristics with this particular holy month. He said, pray and ask God for mercy to finish the rest of the year strong. Just not any kind of way, but strong. Let me finish what you have given me. All right. The second thing, another characteristic is, is this. This is a month that you must receive boundaries. You have to receive boundaries. If you are a business person, you have to stay so focused that when you get those phone calls or when you get those emails, you have to be bold enough, strong enough to say when people say, oh, I'm coming over. And you know, you already asked God for the mercy to complete what he's giving you. You're going to have to say, I'm not accepting visitors right now. You may get some kickback. Isn't that a nice way of saying no, Nick, not up, not happening. I'm staying focused. But we always got to leave love on the table, right? So what you need to say is during this time, I'm not receiving visitors right now. And when they say, well, when are you? You say, I'll let you know. See, because this is a business that, this is a month that God wants to do business with you. And you want to do business with God. I love um, going to Jamaica right now. And literally at the airport, there's a big old mural. And it says, do business with Jamaica. I said, now that was a Zebulon that put that up there. Because they are about doing business. If you ask God for something, he gives it back to you. He said, then another characteristic of this month will be you extend mercy. You be merciful this month. That's why I said, you know, you got to say it nice. I got to stay focused. No, I can't do that. No, I can't go there. Other people can. I cannot. I need to catch up on my rest. The eyes that when my eyes are open, I need them to be about kingdom business in this time because God opens a portal for his business people during this particular time. Now, this is a very important time, Apostle. It's so important that probably people are texting people right now and putting it already on copy. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not accepting visitors right now because this is a smitter year. You guys, let me explain that to you. If you look up Smitter year, on top of this being a double, double year, God has set up the perfect storm to bless you. If you know when to recognize and understand the times and the seasons, that no matter what the world is doing, he says, listen, there is no lack uh, among us. That's why he had us to go and read about the church of Acts and what happened. On Pentecost, that's why they were in the upper room. And they didn't choose everybody. Because they're just like, listen, we only want those that literally are believing what Jesus said he was going to do. He's going to perform on this day. And so it is said they were in the upper room celebrating Pentecost um, anyway. And then a mighty wind came through. And then after that, they went out and they spoke in different tongues. Apostle, I'll tell you this. The reason why in studying why they spoke in different tongues 
especially in this month. He says, you're going to have to learn the tongue of business. Now, listen, I have scripture to show you this. When Jesus go to Matthew 4 and read it all, when Jesus started his ministry, guess where he went? They said he went to Galilee. He first he went and was tested in the wilderness. And then when he came back, he took care of kingdom business first. And then it said he went to Galilee in the land of Zebulon, what I'm teaching on tonight, in the land of Nephtali. He went to the business person. He took care of kingdom business first. And then he said, now I got to go to the kingdom person. I got to go to the Zebulon because I am going to need people that know how to do business, to operate in kingdom business and earthly business and speak the tongue a business to different men. I get excited about that. You know, this particular month, another trifecta that he showed you that he works in tri-dimensional is we have to look at alignment. There was Moses, there was Miriam, and there was Aaron. Each one of them had a position. Each one of them did not try to cross over into something that they were not. They kept it, what we say, real apostle. They knew that Moses was the mouthpiece operated in a Levite, as a Levite unto God to be the mediator between God and to get the information to them. They knew that Aaron was a high priest and he went into um, the tabernacle and prayed for God, prayed to God on behalf of their sins. And Miriam was considered like the worship leader, y'all. She was the director of worship and she prayed. This is a month of alignment. And let me tell you something. You have to watch this alignment. Remember I told you guys about the 100, the kids of Wolf, right? They're the ones that look at the back of the leader's head. This is a particular month where your walk have to match your talk. Business persons know, and they look at you very quickly to see if indeed your talk is matching your walk. This was given over 3,300 years ago because they said that if you, and you can find this in Proverbs 10 and 9, therefore making conscious and ongoing progress in order to move from one level of strength, is said to the next. See, you got to have strength to occupy wealth. Just like you have to have strength and be all up in the face of God like Moses was to carry his glory because both is heavy. Most people cannot carry the weight of wealth. He told you what you have to do to do it. To carry the glory of God, you have to be in his word and you have to be in worship and prayer and praise with God. You have to follow that trifecta. In the business world, you have to do that as well. You have to follow prosperity principles. In this month, God wants to do business with us in the month of Savant, and he wants you to learn prosperity principles. When we connect, I talk what I walk. I don't look like I can afford it. I can really afford it. Y'all listen. I have to put on some high heels in this. Most men and women of God that have walked through and been all up in God's face to be able to carry the weight of his glory can carry wealth. You are in a very unique and not often seen, sadly enough, presence of leaders that they walk can match their top. Listen, that they're able and have strengthened themselves with knowledge of understanding prosperity principles. Most people, when they get well, and they don't know the prosperity principles that God has laid the foundation down through this given month. Most people do not know, Apostle, that this is given month. Most people don't know that they should lean on Luke 6 and 38. 
Given it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give into your bosom or your lap? Why? Because you can't outgive God. He said, if you don't see the harvest in this time, ask the God of the harvest. He said, because it's there. I've done it for 5,782 years. Listen, y'all, I get excited about this particular month because it is connecting to giving. Most billionaires and millionaires is built into them. Our government make them strong. And if they show themselves weak, they put the law to them. What am I talking about? God has a built-in amount that he says, in certain times of the year, do this and I'll do this. What am I talking about? This is the given and the key factor of this month. Please hear me. I always do a first fruit offering at the beginning of the month. That is a prosperity principle. The world, it says, listen, they pay themselves first, but they know they better pay who? Some type of uh, tax. Or if they don't, they're going to have to be like us. They're going to have to give it to a charity. Are you guys following me? I'm showing you how God gets wealth to those in this month. It's like a measure, a measuring line. He said, who is strong enough to carry it? Who is strong enough that's been all up in my face? Who is a Zebulon that understands the priesthood, the prophets, and they are aligned and in alignment this month? I always give a tithe, apostle. And during the feast, you give a special offering. This is this not just me. Those that have principles, they may not practice every law of the Jew of Judaism. But I tell you what, on three feasts, they're giving special offerings. They're examining their business and giving tithe. And they are given to charities and foundations, like literally, like they have lost their mind. Because they know in this particular month, this is where wherever your giving stops, that's where God begins, y'all. He builds up on it and builds up on it and builds up on it. Let me tell you something. I give you the aspects of giving. I didn't told you. First fruits offering, your tithes, and give a special offering, especially around this time. You could absolutely give in three aspects in this month. It's three ways. You can give in your substance. I give three ways in my substance. I give my time. Literally, see who you can actually give your time to. You give time, God gives you time. Did you not know that this is the month that literally with you giving your time to the priesthood, to the prophets, and doing those things to help other people? He said, listen, I'll restore the canker years. I'll store the years that the locust, the canker worm, the pommel worm has stolen from you because now you have given in time. And then the third one, apostle, is revelation. Giving your revelation. No more secret agent kingdom business people. Let people know what you do and what you got. This is the month that you let your light so shine before man that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. Let your light shine. Get that all out. Let God see what he put in you. I said it many a time in speaking since April. You got to be like a pirate in this month. You got to go treasure diving. You have to understand opportunity. You got to actually give in this time. In substance, in your time, and in your revelation. No secret agent. Listen, Apostle. This is the biggest key right here to the chamber that Zebulon knew. That in this time, motivational giving, he did not hide what he gave his brother. Before 
the congregation and everybody he would give to the prophets and the priests and kept giving and kept giving do you guys want to know that term motivational giving and where it came from it came from zebulon because they had business people that feared god more than they feared man yes i have yes i've been obedient i've been all up in his face i have obeyed the man and the woman of god that was moses aaron and a uh, mary and listen i've listened to the prophets my brother and they told me where to go and where the wealth was going to be at and i went and i did not care who saw me give that's where motivational giving came from and it went from that apostle to showing that you are doing what god has told you to do to most business people will not even tell you that they in their church they in your church they would rather give you and you not even know it call you and just ask you for an account number then to literally to come down front yeah and i can hear some of you say you know what you give in secret he'll reward you openly yes he will but it's a certain time during this time that zebulon not showing off not being boastful not being arrogant he said god wants to do business with you and I'm doing business with God and I'm coming back and I am giving into the anointing. Apostle, during Pentecost, I don't know if um, you guys had the seven blessings of Pentecost. I actually studied this. There's seven blessings of Passover as well as there is seven blessings of Pentecost. I want to pronounce them over you and your congregation because you celebrated pentecost there is blessings tied into what you're doing and you got to be like jacob why do we bring up jacob in this time because this is the month that rebecca had jacob and esau esau was caught up in his flesh jacob was always looking for the blessing it is all right for you to be like jacob it's all right for you to be like jabez and say god bless me indeed that nobody around me has a need. Amen. The seven blessings of Pentecost is this, family. An angel of God will be assigned to you to protect you and lead you to your miracles. God will be an enemy to your enemies. He will prosper you. That's number three. Number four, God will take sickness away from you. Number five, you will not die before your appointed time. Number six, increase and inheritance will be yours. Number seven, what the enemy has stolen will be returned to you. That is the seven blessings of Pentecost that has been said for over 3,300 years of Moses coming down from Pentecost with the tablet. I'm gonna give you seven needs and this is why God covers it. One, every fear you have ever faced. That's why he has to assign the angel to you to show you the miracle. Two, every enemy who has come against you. Three, every financial need. That's why he's blessing you. Four, for every sickness. Five, every stolen thing returned. Six, you will not decrease, but increase. And number seven, you will fulfill the number of days of your life. I want to tell you this. Remember, follow the servants of God. Bless your city that you are in and impact the world. Listen, I'm Master Teacher Twyla Brown and Apostle, give it back to you. My God, we receive that word in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Prophetess Twyla Brown, for being with us, for decreeing and declaring the word of truth. We thank God for the grace that he placed on your life to be able to prophetically articulate God's calendar to help us understand. Come on, Word in Action. Come on, Breakthrough Believers. Let's begin to give her a Word in Action. Thank you. We appreciate you. 
that word, we receive that word in the name of Jesus. That word was simply powerful. The Bible says them that worship the Lord must do so in spirit and truth. A lot of times we're doing a lot of shouting and praising, but we don't have truth. And many times we're not doing it in the spirit. We do it out of our emotions. But when you have truth, my God, and you understand that those that worship the Lord must do so in spirit and truth, that means our reliance is not on our own strength. You know, I love the way the woman of God was just breaking that down because it shows us uh, Zechariah 4, 6 to be so real. He said, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. So when we're obedient to the word of truth, when we do what God has called us to do, our obedience causes us to have breakthrough. Somebody needs to type that in tonight. Our obedience to God causes us to have breakthrough. And now we understand why God gives the fivefold ministry so that we can be able to operate in the spirit of God in our assignment and be blessed. You know, Ephesians 4, 11 says, when God says he gave first apostles, prophets, and secondarily uh, uh, teachers and pastors and evangelists to, do, to teach the people to do the work of the ministry. Um, that's their assignment. So we just thank God again for prophets tonight. What a word. Let's get ready to give God his tithe. That tithe unlocks uh, the treasures of heaven. The word of God tells us in Malachi chapter six, uh, when you read that, he said, well, a man rob God. Say, how have I robbed you, God? In tithes and offerings. Said, you bring me 10%, man, I'll increase you. I'll bless you. I'll rebuke the devourer. He says, but if you don't, then you now have robbed me the opportunity of being able to bless you because you're not operating under the open portal. Well, tonight, we want to make sure, give God a tenth of all of your increase. If God has given you a hundred, then you owe God ten dollars. God has given you a thousand dollars, you owe him a hundred dollars. Make sure that you give God his tithe. Then the Lord loves a free will offering. Those said, man, God, I love you. So I'm just sowing tonight. Hearing that word just really made me understand even the more, God, how you love me. So I want to give you a love offering. Then you have some of those that say, hey, I'm sowing a seed of faith tonight. A seed of faith means, hey, I heard that word. I believe that word. I'm connecting. I'm sowing a seed in the Passover. I am covered in the blood. My family is covered in the blood. I'm sowing that $50 Pentecost seed, that feast seed of Pentecost of celebration. I'm praising God. I want you all to begin to sow now. Say, I'm sowing that $50 seed. I'm giving God uh, his tithe. I'm giving God a love offering. This is our time of giving where we give corporately to God to show God our love, show God our trust, and show God our covenant. The tithe is our covenant to God. The tithe ties us to God, ties the God to us, where we get the manifest presence of the promises of God when we bring the tithe. Then the love offerings, because I love you, God, and I just appreciate you, and I just want to give you some love. I want to sacrifice from my love, God, to your love. Or you're sowing a seed. Say, God, I believe you. I'm sowing into this good ground. I'm sowing into this good harvest. I believe. I receive. The blood of Jesus covers me, and all of the tricks and the schemes of the enemy is going to bypass me and my family. It's going to pass over. Come on, let's begin to give. Let's begin to sow. Let's begin to tithe. Isn't God awesome? He gives us an opportunity to be a part of what we say we believe in. The Bible says, faith without works is dead. If I say I believe, then where's the manifestation of my faith? I release because I believe God to do more for me than what I possess could ever do for me. So my giving is out of my celebration. My giving of the tithe is because I understand I'm in covenant. My giving of my love is because God first loved me. My sowing seed into the word is because I know I'm receiving. I'm giving a free will offering. I'm sowing into this. I believe this, Apostle Langston. What a word. What a blessed word again. We thank Prophetess Twyla Brown. Thank all of you for tuning in. Man, Pastor Robin and I, we love you. You need prayer for anything. You want prayer for salvation. Say, I want to give my life to Christ. I want to confess with my mouth. Well, God, we have some uh, intercessors that want to just simply pray the prayer of salvation with you, that after you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, we're going to come in agreement with you and just pray a hedge of protection and a covering over you, and that you will come into all that God has for you in Jesus' name. Maybe you need prayer for healing or deliverance. Whatever it is, we have intercessors that are here to pray for you. We want to pray for you. Say, hey, I want to connect ministry, but I don't live locally. Well, 
We want you to know you can be a part of our cyber sanctuary on Sunday morning. We are on live. You can stream us live on Tuesday night, just like tonight. You can connect to us live. And Pastor Robin and I, we would love to be your shepherds. We would love to pastor you and to get all of this good information and revelation that God has given to us that has blessed our lives, give it to you so that your life can be blessed. So call that number. Let them know, hey, I want to join the ministry. Hey, I need a covering. I'm not sure yet if I want to join, but I'm just out here and I don't have anybody praying for me and I don't have anyone covering me. Make sure you let them know so we can get your information so somebody can call you back because we want to make sure that you're prayed for and that you're covered in the name of Jesus. It's crazy out here, but God loves us. The Bible says in St. John 3, 16, God so loved the world. He gave his son to be a savior for us, for any who would receive him. So make sure you call that number in the name of Jesus. Again, also make sure you get your tithe, your offering, your seed in. Isn't God so loving? God is so merciful. Thank God for all of you, man. I see all of my wonderful sons and daughters and breakthrough believers and people that are connecting to this moment, even visitors and we just thank God for you. Now, I want to pray for you. Father, we just thank you that they're all covered in the blood of Jesus, that we that have come together to give your name praise, honor, and glory, that we are covered and that we are blessed in our coming and our going. We thank you for Prophetess Twyla Brown and her ministry and which you have allowed her to release today has been such a blessing to us. So, Father, we say thank you for that. Now, Lord God, I cancel all spirit of backlash and all demonic influences, and I cover everyone in their family with the blood of Jesus. We decree and declare that no weapon is formed against us is going to prosper. It's going to pass over. It's going to pass by, but it shall not touch us. Now, Father God, I just thank you that we're blessed. Thank you that the tithe and the offering is blessed, that it's multiplying back to your people according to your word. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that it is so. And so it is. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Listen, Pastor Robin and I, we love you. We love serving each and every last one of you. We love ministering the word of God, the good news, being able to come on and give people good news, the forecast. Well, uh, we come on, we have another um, show that we do Monday through Friday. It's really a ministry show where we minister the word of God and we kick off our morning and it's called All Things New. Tune in 7 o'clock a.m. You can tune in right here at 7 o'clock a.m. Monday through Friday. And then at 3.30 on the Impact Network, we're on in over 90 million homes. Tune in, you can be connected. It's going to bless you. It's called the crossover crossover from where you are to where you want to be. And then in the morning, we do all things new where we thank God for a new day and we decree and declare his word that all things are working together for our good in Jesus' name. Isn't God good? Man, I get excited about God. This joy, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it from me. Come on, you need to decree and declare that now. This joy, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it from you. Mwah. Love you, love you, love you in Jesus' name. Until next time. Be blessed. This is the time in our worship experience where we connect our faith to our giving. The Bible tells us in Malachi 3.10 to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. What is a tithe? A tithe means a tenth. It's an honorable, scriptural principle, and it's 10% of all your increase. It also represents relationships and shows that we trust God with every part of our lives, including our finances. When we tithe, we show obedience and gratitude for all that God has given us and return to Him a portion, which is 10% of what we have received. When you obey God and give the tithe, He rewards you. Luke 6.38 reminds us to give, and it will be given to you. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Whether you're a student, a parent, or an elder, Giving the tenth of your financial increase secures and increases the remaining 90% you're left with. 
Have you ever worked your hardest and your finances still weren't enough to cover your expenses? Malachi 3.8-9 says, Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offerings, you are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. It's in our obedience to trust and believe God that we unlock God's promises and blessings in our lives. We welcome you to release your tithe today into good ground. Apostle Clarence Langston and Pastor Robin Langston are committed and invested in God's people. Their 5.4 acre campus is a space for the community to thrive and succeed in God and in life. Our monthly food pantry, giveaways, children and youth ministries, and community events are an investment into God's people. We also take territory beyond the four walls as we minister across the globe with Apostles' daily teachings on all things new and the crossover broadcast that airs on the Impact Network, reaching over 90 million homes. Our ministry's mission is to be part of the restoration of the body of Christ, winning one soul, one house, one block, one community, one city, one nation, all at one time. Teaching the Word, demonstrating the power of Christ, and equipping the saints to impact the world. To give your tithe today, you can give by using the following options. By going to WIACC.com forward slash give. Text to give by texting 313 228 3830 using Cash App and sending your seed to dollar sign Word and Action using PayPal.me forward slash WIACC or lastly using Givelfly and typing in Word and Action Christian Center. Thank you for your love offering. Thank you for tuning in to Transformation Tuesday. On behalf of Apostle Clarence Langston and Pastor Robin Langston, we hope that this transformation experience has been exactly what you've needed so that you're able to come into the purpose and the plan of God for your life. We invite you to join us every Sunday at 11 a.m., every Tuesday at 7 p.m. for our Transformation Tuesday Bible study, and Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. You can catch all things new until next time, be blessed. Guess who's, Guess back, who's back with another game changer. Come on. Apostle Clarence Langston has just released his latest book, Stick, Stand, and Stay. Stick, stand, and stay. This book is a comprehensive guide to help you navigate your way through any storm that comes your way. Whether you're presently in a storm, in a storm. heading into, into one, into one or coming out. out. This book is for you. Tell them what to do. Apostle Langston teaches the principles needed to navigate life's storms and how to stand strong through them all. Okay. He will show you how to experience peace and gratitude during the most difficult storms of your life. I need that. Order your copy of Stick, Stand, and Stay today. Your, your faith, faith will be ignited, ignited and your life will never be, the same. never be the same. To order your copy, please visit www.clarencelangston.com today. Did y'all understand the assignment? Then what you waiting on? on? www.clarencelangston.com You mess around and hold out, and they just might be sold out. Join us for our June message series, The Power Within with Apostle Clarence Langston and Pastor Robin Langston. Sundays at 11 a.m., Tuesdays at 7 p.m., and weekdays at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You don't want to miss this. Join us for a special Father's Day celebration honoring Apostle Clarence Langston and all fathers. Sunday, June 19th at 11 a.m. The Bible says, though you have 10,000 instructors, you only have few fathers. Come as we honor our spiritual father, Apostle Clarence Langston, and all fathers. That's Sunday, 
June 19th at 11 a.m. Now it's Monday through Friday at 12 noon for a powerful intercessory prayer in the sanctuary. If you are available at 12 noon, you want to be a part of intercessory prayer. We will be practicing social distancing and masks are required. Looking for an online church home? Apostle Clarence Langston and Pastor Robin Langston would love to have you join the Word in Action Christian Center family. Text member to 313-228-3830. Get ready to cross over. Clarence Langston Ministries presents The Crossover with Apostle Clarence Langston and Pastor Robin Langston. Join us Monday through Friday at 3.30 p.m. 